At some point while working with vPython, you might want to access a local file on your computer. Now, if you have installed vPython, you can do this using the native Python functions for inputting and reading files. But if you're running vPython through glowscript.org or Trinket, you don't have access to those functions because you can't import the libraries to use them. So the good folks at glowscript.org have brought you this function, read local file. This function is gonna create a dialog box on the screen that will try to access a local file on your computer of your choosing. So all you have to do is put in this little snippet of code and give it a name. So you call the function, tell it where to place the box, usually seen dot title anchor is fine, that'll just put it at the top of the screen, and then give it a name. So we're gonna call this object F, we'll see why that's important in a minute. And so what'll happen is, when I press Control 2 to run this, this read local file is going to create this handy dialog box here where I can choose a file. So I'm gonna find a text file on my computer called opening.txt with some very important contents in it. And I'm gonna click on choose file and I'm gonna go find this file. Here's my file opening.txt. Again, it can be any file you want. Usually it's assuming that it's a text file unless you have a way of working with something else. And so you can see that button now goes away because I've used it. So once I use that button and upload the file, then the code continues on. Uh, what it's gonna show me here in the output is all of the attributes of this object F. So this object F now stores all of the file's attributes. For example, you can access the file's name through f.name here. Uh, then you can see here I'm printing name here as opening.txt, the name of the file that I showed you. Uh, then I've got the file size. This will show you the size of the file in bytes, 473 kilobytes here, not too bad. Uh, it'll show you the type of the file. This is a plain text file. It's able to determine that. Uh, then if it's available, it will show you the date that the file was created. That is here on my date of recording. Now, here comes the interesting part. Because it's read in this file, it has taken all of the file's contents and placed that under f.txt, which is what you see in the box right here. Uh, now I'm printing out the text of the file. So I've got everything I had in the file is now here printed out in the text box. So all of that information is stored in the object f. Now let's suppose you wanted to do something with this text. For example, let's suppose instead of having a huge block of text, you wanted to split that text up word by word. Well, you can do that using this uh, uh, simple function right here. It's already built into Python for you, the split function. Anytime you have a character string, like this is one long character string, it will take those uh, those elements here, the each character, and it's going to split it every time it sees a space. So let's run this again. We'll select the same file, opening.txt. And what you can see here, it's now printing out the split words list. So it's now taken, uh, let me make this view a little bit bigger. There we go. So what it's done here is taken my text here, right? This is the original f.txt, and it split it up word by word. So I now have a list where each item in the list is a different word. So I've got first word, excuse me, the zeroth word, first word, second word, third word, etc., all in my list. So if I wanted to access, for example, the hundredth word, uh, I could say print split words of 100. Are there 100 words in that? I don't know. I guess we're about to find out if we get an error. Now that I have this list, I can access the items in the list, and sure enough, it does not have 100 words. Let's try the tenth word instead. Thought that might fall just a little short. Uh, let's open up opening, there we go. Yes, and so there is the 10th word in that list. So if I go up here and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, oops, I forgot to count zero. Uh, there's the 10th word in the list, which is pretty cool. The way you're able to do that, you can just split it up that way. But maybe you don't wanna split it up word by word. Maybe you want to split it up line by line. So for example, in this text, I have a couple of line breaks. I have a carriage return here, and I have a carriage return here. What if I wanted to split it up that way into the individual lines? Well, that's really straightforward to do. 
we're going to use the split function again, but instead of using the uh, space here, we're going to use the new line character. So the slash n represents a, a new line. It represents uh, the carriage return that tells the text file to put the thing on a new line. Let's try that again. Choose file, opening.txt. And now what I have at the end, I still have my split by words, but now I have this split by line. So I have a list here where my first item in the list is the first line. My second item in the list is the second line, and my third item in the list is the third line. And you can separate this at any character you want. Maybe you want to separate it by sentence, then you could just look for the period, right? So just do split by periods, and it'll then separate it into sentences. Assuming you don't have period used for something else, so you might do period space, right? I could do that. Uh, actually, let's try that. Make a copy and paste. We're going to call this one split by sentences split by sentences cool and instead of doing the carriage return there we're going to do a period space as the split and i think i don't want this part now because that was removing the carriage return that was left over so that i could actually have it separated by line uh, let's try this one yeah so here i've got this thing split by sentence right so here is the end of a sentence uh, he, okay, here is actually not the end of a sentence. This is why you always test these things, because here I have a period and a carriage return. Uh, so I would have to then split by period space and by period carriage return. So there, you, there's always, anytime you're working with text, there's always something funny that's going to get thrown in there. Um, so we'll make a note that this almost works, exclamation mark. But let's suppose you wanted to do something with that input. What, what would you actually use this for in a code? Let's suppose I wanted to read in a file that is rows of coordinates. So instead of this file, let's make a new file, uh, call it coords.txt. And then let's suppose I put in some three dimensional coordinates like one, 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 negative one, one, two, three, seven, and zero, zero, negative two, let's say. I'll save that. What this is now going to do is first it's gonna split it by lines just like we did before. So it's gonna split by the carriage return and then remove the, the carriage return that's left over. Uh, then we're gonna go over the rows that are in the split by lines. So the split by lines is a list that has these characters, these characters, these characters, and these characters. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna take each of those rows and now split the rows by spaces. So the convention here is that our coordinates are gonna be separated by spaces. And so we'll then read out the X, Y, and Z coordinates based on where they are in that list. Uh, let's press Control-2 to run. All right, now don't choose the wrong file for this because if I choose the other one, it's gonna get an error because it's not gonna be reading in numbers. And so you see here what I've done is I've read in these uh, coordinates. So I've read in the 111, the 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 7, and 0, 0, negative 2. And what I've done is made a sphere at each of those locations. So each of those locations that I created in the coordinate file are now represented by spheres on the screen. So I could add in another one, right? I could add in a, uh, a 10, 10, negative 1. Run this again. And now I don't have to actually change anything about the code. I can simply input a different data file and there I get my extra uh, sphere that I just added by adding that other line there. So this is really useful, for example, if you're wanting to write a code and you want to be able to try different values for your inputs, but you don't want to edit those inputs in the code file itself. You just change the file that you are uploading there. So anyway, that's how you can upload files to glowscript.org to interact with your code. Hope that's useful to you. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.